Can you see it? Right about there. Fun times ahead. Alrighty guys, so as you might have seen from the intro, we have a Ryzen CPU that has a bit of a problem. Actually, a quick little recap on that too. This Ryzen CPU actually got locally through OfferUp in my local markets. I spent 40 bucks on it, so it's a pretty good deal. It's a Ryzen 1200, but the main thing being here is when I went to go put it in a motherboard to test it and realized it wouldn't sit in there correctly. So a portion of the CPU was kind of raised up and with the Ryzen CPU, it should just drop right in. There should be no force required. It's a literally just drop in, put the locking pin down and you're fine. So right away I knew I at least had some bent pins. So I guess you could say, well, why didn't you check the CPU when you actually get picked the part up? Well, I did. And also, you know, I was at a local gas station. So I'm looking at it. I don't really see anything. They weren't bent so bad that I could easily tell. And honestly, detecting a missing pin is, I think, possibly even harder to see because you're looking at these pins, you start to go cross-eyed. But so obviously we have some, we had some bent pins too. So I worked that out and actually the iFixit kit has a really good little plastic spudger that'll just fit right in between here to kind of help, you know, put things back in place. And, you know, other people use something like a razor blade or, you know, something that can fit in between the pins to help align them. So got the pins in a line, everything was good. CPU dropped right back in. I was like, all right, I'm good to go. But what I did notice through bending those pins back was I'm missing one. So I've heard through other tech YouTubers that if you're missing a pin, you might be okay with that. It could just be a grounding pin and the CPU will operate, you know, just fine. So I crossed my fingers, put the CPU in and well, let me show you exactly what's going on. Alrighty guys, so just for sake of demonstration, I'm going to reinstall the CPU so that way you guys can see it happen. But the CPU pins should be all good now and it'll just drop right in. That's what we wanted. No force, I'm wiggling a little bit just to make sure it's not sitting funny and it's completely fine. So I'll close down the retention arm and the CPU is reinstalled. Though this wasn't happening before obviously, it was sitting funky and I had to rebend those pins so it'll actually installed properly. You'd, like I said before, you don't want to have to have any force involved with installing the CPU. Next, what I want to show you is what's actually occurring after we've got obviously the cooler reinstalled after a post occurs and we go to try to load up windows. So I'm going to put the camera on the screen here and show you exactly what's going on. Oh guys, and just a quick overview of what I got going on here. I guess it's worth mentioning. I have a B450 motherboard. This is Asus Tr Tough Strix, which actually I bought locally as well. This is just a basic video card some type of old Radeon card that doesn't require any PCIe powers. Just basically, we just want display out of it. And then we got an SSD that's got, this is just an old crucial SSD I've had for years. That's just got an OS on it. They basically just use it for OS booting and testing, things like this. As you can see down below, we have a power supply. This is an EVGA 600 watt unit. So all this stuff is known to be working. This is the first time I am testing this motherboard as far as its functionality. Uh, so the issue that is going on, you know, could still potentially be the motherboard. I don't really have any reason to doubt it though, just because, well, the things that we know that are wrong are the CPU, which is missing a pin. So I uh, also meant to say that I got, you know, two eight gig sticks of G-Skill DDR4 memory. So really, like I said, there's no reason to really doubt this motherboard. All I, I know all these other components work as they've been tested in other systems before. So the thing that I'm doubting obviously is the CPU that has the missing pin. But now that we got everything kind of all connected up and ready for power on, I'll put the camera on the screen here so you guys can see exactly what's going on. Alrighty guys, so three, two, one, power on. RAM is lighting up. Everything looks normal. I'm gonna pan over to the screen now. Set my camera. Here, all right, let's see what we got going on. It's going through post checks. Okay, should see a screen here. There we go. So everything still seems normal. And it says new CPU install, blah, 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 as you would normally expect. Hit F1 to go into setup menu. All right, and here we are. So we are in the BIOS now. No problems there whatsoever, at least getting to it anyway. Um, everything seems to be basically where it should be as far as 
menus set to their default options. I mean, this is a brand new motherboard that I just received, so everything should be reset. Not seeing any particular problems here really at all. See the processor detected, Ryzen 3 1200. We see 16 gigs of RAM, so nothing really standing out of the ordinary here. So what we'll do here is just hit F10 to exit and attempt to load up Windows here. And this is where the strangeness starts to occur. All right, so going through another post. Again, checks out just fine. Now going into Windows loading screen. And then you just saw I got frozen there. So now what's gonna happen is I'm going to start getting postcode errors on my memory. Been through this a couple times at this point. So let's zoom in on that. Yeah, there it goes. So that amber light that's flashing, kind of hard for me to get in there. And, but what it's saying is the second memory module, B2 channel, is having an issue. So unfortunately, it's not just that channel. What I've ended up doing is I've actually taken both, out both sticks and only put one stick in each slot and tried this over and over and over and end up with the same results. So whatever happened, I think with that pin has some control with the memory and is causing this booting issue that we see. All right, so let's have a little sip of coffee before we get into this. All right, so, well, yes, I messed up, and but I guess in a good way, because as you can see, we got Heaven Benchmark running on the screen that we were trying to boot into, and the test bench with the Ryzen CPU that has a missing pin running just fine. I guess let me just point this out, because this is a valuable lesson in PC building, or if you do flipping like I do and you're buying used parts, or maybe you're an IT professional like I also am, because unfortunately, YouTube is not my full-time job, maybe in the long run, but for now, I do have to balance the both. But the lesson here being, don't get blindsided by some form of evidence that you might see that might lead you in some direction. Always trust but validate, right? So I obviously we knew for sure we had a missing pin and we were expecting problems right out of the get-go. So I knew, well, this thing's got a missing pin, there's, there's gonna be issues, right? And then, after dropping it in to the motherboard, trying to boot up immediately, an issue. So that kind of narrowed or blinded my focus on what could be the issue. But as you saw probably from those context clues, uh, I did finally find the issue because I don't really know exactly what led me to it. Actually, you know what it was? I was beginning to edit a little bit of this video and I noticed hey, there's, uh, there's an overclock applied here. The CPU has that, uh, uh, it's trying to hit like 4.1 gigahertz out of the box. And these CPUs hit 3.1 out of the box and they'll turbo up to, I believe, 3.7. So immediately that was a red flag indicator for me because I was going through the parts of getting the intro ready for this video and then noticed a bit of that in my film. And I, then I noticed, my gosh, uh, that's probably the issue. So went back into the BIOS reset everything to default and off away I went and I immediately just booted into Windows. So now things to take away from that, I assumed, and again, that's always dangerous when in any field or any portion of life, right, that don't go based on your assumption. So I assumed that the Ryzen was the issue and I assumed by doing a new CPU install that you know the, the CMOS would reset and we'd be back to defaults on the mother motherboard. That clearly was not the case. Now, also what I wanted to make point out too is the motherboard is a used part as well. So I picked that up locally. So someone had previously obviously been tinkering with it. There you have it. What I'm trying to say here is I decided to go ahead and continue on with this video as a learning tool for you guys. If you're running into any kind of technical issue in the computer world or maybe just anything in life in general, don't always be laser focused on something that is at least giving you some inclination of where the problem may be. It's always good to pursue that and it's always good to rule that out. What I didn't do was I didn't think of anything in the, you know, the larger grand scheme. I just focused on the Ryzen missing pin and figured that was the issue. Now, obviously I was beginning to rule it out because I wasn't getting anywhere as far as what to do next with the Ryzen pin. The, the, actually, the next step would have been using a sacrificial CPU, which I have actually on hand being this Athlon and, and pluck away a pin from here and drop it into the motherboard and see if that would fix the issue. And I guess that would have been a lot of wasted effort because I would have done that and still had the same problem.
So all in all guys, I hope at least this video was informative to the sense that, you know, it'd be a troubleshooting kind of one-on-one video. You know, make sure you're doing your due diligence if you're running into issues with your PC. Uh, maybe you're tinkering around with overclocking. Maybe you're buying used hardware like I am and you're running into a problem because this isn't the first time I've bought used hardware and I've had to troubleshoot something. You know, I'm knowingly expecting it because I'm buying used hardware. And this one kind of got me stuck for a little bit, but I thought hopefully, you know, since I'm continuing to create this video, it at least has some entertaining value as well. I also got to thinking too, let me know in the comments below, if you want to see me break that CPU. So the idea here was to, at least initially with this video, was to show you guys a broken CPU missing a pin and salvaging a pin from another CPU to kind of get it running again. Um, I actually have different plans for that motherboard. I kind of want to put a bit better of a processor in it. The Ryzen 12 is okay, but I only paid like 40 bucks for it. So I'm kind of okay with it. Just kind of dying to content on YouTube if that's what you guys want to see. But all in all guys, I hope you guys found the value, the video valuable and entertaining in a way at least. And you learned something from this one and through my failures. So before you guys go, make sure you do the YouTube thing, right? Give me a like if you enjoyed this content and let me know as I said in the comments if you want to see me kill that Ryzen 1200 by plucking some pins off of it and uh, replacing them with some donor pins from another CPU. I think maybe at least that would make for some fun content, right? But anyway, if you stuck with the video this long, then I'd like to say thanks for tuning into this one. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one.